I am so happy to be talking about Taxi Driver. I love this movie. It's one of those rare films that's super dark and obscure, but also really rewatchable. I don't know if that's just me, but anyway, it's really one of the most intimate, immersive, and authentic films I have ever seen. I'm trying to hold back from rambling too much about how much I like it, so let's get into Classic Explained Episode 3. Taxi Driver. I'm gonna break it down using three themes. One, Consequence of Loneliness, where we'll discuss the film's structure, the film's genre, the psychological loneliness spiral, and chronic loneliness. Two, False Purpose, where we'll discuss Travis's hypocrisy, lack of purpose, and false purpose. And three, Delusion of Heroism, where we'll discuss Travis's frustration, Travis's racism, Palantine and Matthew, Betsy and Iris, the Scorsese scene, Travis's turn to false heroism, and the meaning of the ending, and much more. And if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and a comment. It helps so much. And if you want to see more of these, please make sure to subscribe as well. Let's get started. Theme number one, consequence of loneliness. Taxi Driver is a film that doesn't follow the traditional routine in constructing a story. Usually with a film, we get the three act structure, the setup, the confrontation, and the resolution. But in this film, these three acts seem to be broken up and scattered all over the runtime of the movie. And the reason why is because Taxi Driver is a character study, a work of fiction in which the exploration of the central character's personality is more important than the plot. And in this movie, we dive deeper and deeper into how Travis Bickle's loneliness shapes his dark and twisted state of mind. Travis is a character who never really feels like he fits in. In every street shot, people are racing by him, usually in the opposite direction. People don't laugh at his jokes. Women aren't really interested in him romantically, and he never really strikes a genuine connection with the passengers in his taxi. Of course, there are two outliers who Travis does strike a good connection with. Betsy and Iris, but I'll talk about these two a little later because they're extremely important to the story later on. So, since Travis can't connect with those around him, he begins to blame others for his shortcomings. I was reading a recent report by the campaign to end loneliness, and in it there was this diagram called the downward spiral of loneliness. And it says, loneliness can lead to a loss of confidence and withdrawal from others. This can set off a downward spiral of more negative thoughts and despair. And and, if left unchecked, lead to chronic loneliness. Chronic loneliness can lead to feelings of depression, insomnia, substance use, cynicism, lack of accountability, further separation from society, and greater mental health and emotional problems. And Travis demonstrates all of these symptoms throughout this film. He's unhappy with his career and environment. He struggles to sleep, so he works longer and later hours. He makes up ridiculous excuses not to see his parents, who may or may not be alive. And most of all, he has an extremely cynical view of the people in his city. He calls them scum, dogs, and filth, and continuously mentions that they need to be cleaned out. Travis genuinely believes he isn't the problem, and he has no problems, and it's everyone else in his city who needs fixing. And there's a tremendous amount of hypocrisy in Travis's way of thinking and living, which I want to get into in theme number two. False purpose. When Travis is on his first date with Betsy, she reveals the central flaw in Travis's character. She says he's a prophet and a pusher, partly truth, partly fiction, a walking contradiction. Travis's delusion resulting from his loneliness has made him full of ironies. He is a walking contradiction who is extremely hypocritical when criticizing his community. He complains about the cleanliness of the streets while his house is a mess. He claims the city needs organization when he admits his life is unorganized. And when Betsy leaves him, he categorizes Betsy as being just like the rest of them. After he takes her to a pornographic theater without warning her, Travis Travis's lack of self-awareness makes him incapable of solving his own problems. It also makes him incapable of finding purpose. All my life needed was a sense of some place to go. The only thing we learn about his backstory is he used to serve with the Marines, where he was certainly seeking some sense of fellowship 
belonging and greater purpose. His current job is quite the opposite, and it symbolizes his lack of direction. Every night, every ride, the passengers are literally telling Travis where to go. Travis works longer hours than the other cab drivers, but he claims he doesn't mind. This is clearly because he has no idea of what else to do and has nowhere else to go. He has no form of fulfillment or control over his life. However, there is this continuous element of foreshadowing in this movie of something in Travis that is slowly rising up. It's like there's an explosion that's about to happen, and as Martin Scorsese says, Travis is like a ticking time bomb waiting to go off. The eerie music swells as the camera slowly zooms in on the drink bubbling towards the brim, and similar music plays as the camera slowly zooms in on Palantine describing an inevitable rise of the people. We also also see him slowly pushing over his TV as he watches two romantically involved characters breaking up. And all of these subtle forms of foreshadowing are pointing to a dramatic shift in Travis's character. A complete disconnection from regular society and a new, extremely irrational sense of purpose that Travis believes he is meant for. Which brings me to theme number three, delusion of heroism. I want to highlight an important conversation that Travis has with Palantine that sparks his delusional need to become a hero. Palantine asks, what is the one thing in this country that bugs you the most? And Travis replies, well, whatever it is, you should clean up this city here because this city is like an open sewer. It's full of filth and scum, and sometimes I can hardly take it. Whoever becomes the president should just really clean it up. Sometimes I go out and I smell it. I get headaches, it's so bad. They just never go away. Travis here is expressing his frustration with his environment and his community and feels like the city needs saving. In Travis's delusional mind, he has his own perception of what's good and bad in his city. And in Travis's mind, there are three major antagonists. The first is African American men. The African American men in this film are depicted as dangerous, confrontational, and scheming. This, of course, is a false judgment by Travis, since many of these black men do nothing wrong. The purpose of the eerie and unpredictable cinematography that captures the African American men symbolizes Travis's racist and bigoted point of view. The second antagonist is Palantine. Travis believes that Palantine's political party and organization is the cause for Betsy's lack of fulfillment, which is also a false judgment. Betsy seems to really enjoy her career and get along well with the people she works with. The third antagonist is Matthew, who is ruining the life of Iris. Travis connects with Iris because Iris also has no control over her life and is conditioned to expect to be told what to do. This is the only judgment out of the three that is justifiable. Matthew is an awful man doing awful things to impressionable young women. Eventually, Travis believes he needs to take these matters into his own hands. And there's an extremely important scene in this movie that tips Travis over into this false hero state of mind. And the scene that I'm talking about is yes, you probably guessed it, the scene with Scorsese. When Travis is in the car with Scorsese's character, the character states that his wife is in this apartment having an affair with a black man. He also says he's going to kill her with a 44 Magnum pistol. Scorsese's character is clearly out of his mind, but this allows Travis to receive some form of validation and justification for the sick, falsely heroic thoughts that have been brewing in his head. Scorsese's character asks Travis if he thinks he's sick for what he's about to do. You can see Travis slowly deciding that what Scorsese's character is doing is okay to him. It's the perfect situation to tip Travis into madness. To regular people, it's a psychotic thought, but to Travis, it's confirmation that a black man is scheming and that many women and men in this city are animals and they need to be cleared out. Right after this, Travis has a conversation with Wizard to express his most recent feelings, and these feelings are clearly overflowing within him. Travis says, I got some bad ideas in my head, but when Wizard tries to guide him back to sanity, Travis says, that's about the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Travis is at a point of no return, and I think the most symbolic shot of this is when he burns Betsy's flowers. It symbolizes that he's killing any potential for future romance and burning any bridges of potential companionship. 
At this point, Travis sees himself as something more than the people around him. A man with a greater purpose who needs to do what no one else is doing. He's mentioned to Palantine that a politician hasn't cleaned up the city, and he's mentioned to Iris that the police won't save her. So he's decided he needs to take it upon himself to be the hero. This is his purpose. We even see him race past potential passengers as he goes to save Iris. He has his new greater purpose, so he abandons his old mundane one. This comparison might sound super weird, but I feel like it's super relevant to the film, and I'll keep it brief. But it's almost like Travis, in his dark and twisted state of mind, believes he is some kind of vigilante, almost like a comic book hero. He needs to save a city that's falling apart, he needs to rise above the people who doubt him, and he needs to defeat the villains that threaten the women he needs to protect. And we see him throughout the film, acquiring his weapons, building his physical strength, and practicing his catchphrases, just like a fictional hero would do. He even gets a new look in the process. The only problem, as mentioned before, is unlike these heroes, he has a broken moral compass. So when Travis kills the black man in the convenience store, tries to kill Palantine, and kills Matthew and his affiliate, Travis sees these acts all as acts of righteous heroism, which brings me to the ending of the film. Is it real or is it fake? I believe like most of these kinds of movies, it's completely up to you and how you see the film. But if you ask me, I think it's a bit of both. I don't think Travis would be invited to Iris's family's place after he sat there with a smile on his face pretending to shoot himself after he saved Iris. He's clearly a madman to the police who are walking in. However, the article titles and content seem to be pretty realistic. I do, however, overall think that everything we see is how Travis sees himself, whether it's true or not. And I think what all of us can agree upon is he has now spiraled completely into a life of delusion. And the very final scene in the film seems quite surreal as we only see Betsy in Travis's rearview mirror. And in this moment, Travis seems quite fulfilled. He brushes off her compliments, says he hopes Palantine wins, and refuses Betsy's money. However, in the next shot, just before the end of the film, the musical score takes one more eerie turn as we see Travis's eyes dart back and forth in and out of his rearview mirror. This final moment confirms that Travis is not fulfilled. He's not a real hero, and he's still so alone. In Travis's mind, he's a vigilante, serving a purpose greater than himself, when in reality, He's just a ticking time bomb waiting and hoping to be noticed. All right, that's my analysis. American Psycho is next, which is going to be really interesting. I love that movie. And please let me know your thoughts on Taxi Driver. Let me know your ideas because every time I watch that movie, there's something new that I discover and I would love to read it in the comments. I hope you subscribe so I can see you again. And thank you so much for watching. See you later.